Welcome everyone to our deferred enrollment at the GSB session. We're really fortunate to be joined by some of our current students and alumni who have actually come to Stanford through our deferred enrollment program. So we're going to spend the majority of our time today talking with them about their decision to pursue deferred enrollment and pursue their MBA here at Stanford. But before we do that, I want to ground us a little bit today with you because ultimately the most important person in this whole process is you. And the decision to pursue a graduate degree in business and ultimately where will start with you. You are going to decide what the next phase of your journey will be. It's your goal to decide that will what will drive you forward. It's our goal to help you achieve those goals, whatever they might be. And a lot of goals started here at Stanford and became something much bigger. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about our approach to management education here at Stanford. So at Stanford, we encourage you to expand your mindset, opening yourself up to new points of view, possibilities, opportunities. We try to ground you in thinking about how to think boldly helping you approach problems with a fresh perspective and get, the, and get to the most innovative solutions. We try to help you build your community, meeting people who will encourage and inspire you from classmates to faculty, to alumni and business leaders. We'll try to teach you to lead from the heart, finding your personal leadership style that will ultimately help you lead authentically and ethically playing to both your strengths and your values. And we wanna help you define the future, not just the shape of your own personal future, but the future of your organization and maybe even the future of the world. So it's a little bit about the Stanford MBA, but I wanna ground us a little bit right now in deferred enrollment. What is it? How does it work? So for us here at Stanford, the what is that deferred enrollment will allow you to apply for early admission to business school and then gain professional experience before starting your MBA. When do you do it? Well, it looks like many of you have already figured this part out. You'll be applying in the final year of your bachelor degree or while you're enrolled in a graduate program that you began immediately following your undergraduate program. How does it work? Well, you'll select your preferred enrollment year in your MBA application. There is no separate application for deferred enrollment. You'll actually use the same MBA application as those that are applying for direct enrollment this year. And as a deferred candidate, you'll have the opportunity and the option to defer anywhere from one to four years. And if you are eligible for deferred enrollment, you will pay a reduced application fee of $100. So that's a very high level overview of what deferred enrollment is. But this is really just the very beginning of your journey. So we encourage you to check out mystanford.mba where you'll be able to take a short quiz uh, that will allow you to create a personalized dashboard where you can keep track of your application progress, find out about upcoming events and other information uh, about Stanford that is ultimately very tailored for you and your interests. So I encourage you to continue to engage with our school and, and join us for other events that we may be hosting from our information sessions to our meet an admission officer or meet a student sessions that we are hosting regularly these but days. For right now, I'd really like us to focus on spending some time with our panel because these are students who've gone through the deferred enrollment process. And we hope that hearing from them will allow you to better prepare for what's next for you. So with that, I would like to turn things over to our wonderful panel today. I'm gonna to give everyone just a minute to digest this introduction panel here, and then we're going to actually hear from everyone directly. Uh, so I'm going to turn things over to our panel right now and ask each of you uh, to go right in order that we can see your names here on the screen. And rather than just repeating some of the things that we can see here, I'd love for you to share your name what you studied in undergrad and how long your deferral period was before you joined us at Stanford. 
And we'll do intros with this slide and then we'll stop sharing that slide and turn things over completely to the panel today. So Antman, take it away. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm, my name's Anshuman, I was class of 15 um, at the GSD. My undergrad was in uh, industrial engineering at Purdue uh, with a minor in math. And uh, I was deferred for two years. Um, so I um, applied right out of uh, college in 2011 and then matriculated in 2013, graduated in 2015. Wonderful. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, I'm a current MBA one, pursuing a dual degree with the Kennedy School. Um, I graduated from Dartmouth College in 2017 with a degree in government and human-centered design. Uh, and my deferral uh, period of time was three years. Hi everyone, I'm Jisha. I'm uh, an MBA two to graduating this June. I went to Cornell for my undergrad, studied computer science, um, and my and just for four years before coming to the GSC. And my name is Devin. Uh, I was class of 2018 uh, at the University of Missouri. I was class of 14, studying math, economics, and statistics, and so got in then. Started GSB uh, in 16. Uh, I. Uh, yeah, and I'm excited to chat with you all. Uh, we do unfortunately have to let Jisha go a little early today because she's heading into an evening class. So we will certainly try to, to get uh, as many questions to her earlier on before she has to go. So I'm gonna turn this over to uh, Antimon and then uh, Devin Greenberg. I'd love to hear from your perspectives because you have two different undergraduate backgrounds. Uh, tell me a little bit about why you decided to pursue Graduate School of Business, uh, an MBA program. Um, well, I'll go first. Um, so uh, for me, um, a big theme of uh, my interest and something that I'm deeply passionate about is um, how we as a society collaborate and coordinate. And a big part of that, you know, given that we're in Silicon Valley today, is technology, but another part of it is management. You know, how do you get one plus one to yield three, right? Um, and so with that as a big focus, I realized that that's where an MBA could be pretty powerful because I think it effectively accelerates and jumpstarts the learning perhaps you might already have gotten, right? Um, if, if, for example, if you want to build and scale businesses, which is what I want to do, um, you can't always do that in a classroom, but you can maximize the probability and the likelihood of that happening uh, because you're jumpstarting your education there. And specifically, I think the GSB played a big role for me because you know, it really provided three big things. One, um, a diverse set of peers that I could learn from, um, an interdisciplinary environment, because I think that's the reality of uh, businesses and organizations that we're in today. And then finally, and most importantly, a practitioner-led curriculum. Um, you know, I, I think my experience with my classes was that over 50% of my classes were practitioner-led, which was uh, incredible. And so, that's why I chose an MBA and a, and a Stanford MBA in particular. Great, and I'll build on that. Um, I always like to say, I didn't really choose to pursue an MBA. I chose to pursue an MBA at Stanford. Um, and I really feel that to be true. Um, and by, uh, by applying as a deferred admin, I had the luxury of doing so with no real downside. Um, and there were two primary reasons that, that drove that choice. Um, the first is that I had a hypothesis at that point that I wanted to be a leader one day in federal government um, and specifically to drive uh, design-led innovation in that space. Um, so the first reason was really about getting this wonderful cross-sector management toolkit as Anshuman uh, referred to. Uh, I think Stanford's pretty distinctively positioned to, to give you that. Um, and the second reason was more about Stanford holistically as a university um, and its strength in design. So specifically the D school here. Um, and I was just so excited about diving into the D-School classes through my MBA. Um, yeah. Fantastic. So next question is going to be for Devin Kelsey and Jisha. When you were thinking about applying, what led you to the deferred enrollment path versus maybe working for a few years and then applying? So Jisha, maybe we'll start with you. Sure. Um, I think like what Devin was saying that it there wasn't any real downside to applying while I was in college. And I think 
that was the, the driver. While there is an opportunity, I wanted to take advantage of it. Um, and it also, I also felt like I was convinced enough that an MBA would be helpful to me down the road. Um, I was just doing CS. I had a job lined up as a software engineer, and I knew I loved building technology products, but I wanted to learn how to build technology businesses down the road. And so it was just a question of why wait if there's an opportunity to apply now. Um, and then I always thought, oh, like if it, if it doesn't work out, I can always apply later too, but there's, there's no reason not to try now. Yeah, I didn't know a lot about MBA programs when I started the process, um, but I saw it as a uh, very similar to as both the last two speakers said, just a why not question. Um, I didn't think I could get into a school like Stanford candidly, um, but I, I figured why not apply to some of my reach schools now. Um, and I thought in a world where I didn't get in, I was comfortable with that because I was like the normal world is waiting a few years and then applying. And so I can always wait until then and apply to not just my reach schools, but the ones I thought I had more of a chance of getting in. Um, and I was lucky enough to, uh, to uh, apparently get into one of my reach schools. Thanks everyone. So one of the first questions coming into us was about choosing recommenders. So the question was asking, you know, how, how do you choose a recommender? So if you're coming maybe with some limited full-time professional work experience, how do you select your recommenders? We provide some guidance on our website, but curious to maybe hear from one or two of you uh, about your process for selecting a recommender. Um, so Devin Greenberg, maybe we'll direct this question to you. Did you select internship supervisors, supervisors who've maybe worked with you at student clubs or organizations? Maybe share uh, with the group today a little bit about how you thought about that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there's no wrong answer there in terms of it being an internship supervisor or maybe a professor you did research for. Uh, for me personally, I went with two professors, one government one and one human centered design one, uh, both of whom I had TA'd for and so who had like direct uh, experience with my work and could speak to that pretty, pretty precisely. Uh, I think more broadly, as I was approaching the application process, I was trying to think about the broader story I was trying to tell. Um, and, you know, what would be cohesive with my essay with my resume with uh, the portrait I was trying to paint and, and the info I wanted to share with the admissions committee. Um, so when I was translating that to the recommender choice, it was really like, who knows me best, who understands my story best, and yeah, who do I think can convey that well? Um, yeah. Yeah, some really good advice there. So the next question is, can you change your mind about when you want to enroll? after you get in. So for example, in your application, if you indicate you want a two year deferral and then you want to maybe start later, uh, the answer is yes, you do have a lot of flexibility. Uh, you can request uh, or, or say that you want to come in one or two years. And then at that point in time, we actually check in with you and ask if you want one more year or two more years. Uh, essentially, you have a lot of wiggle room up until that maximum of four years. So Jisha, I know you actually took the, the long route and actually decided to extend your deferral through the maximum four years. Could you maybe share with the group a little bit about what led to that decision? Yeah, sure. So um, I got in with a two-year deferral period. I forget if I picked that or if that was standard at the time. Um, and then every year I just reconsidered that this was the time to, to go to Stanford and was able to defer one year at a time up till four years before I came here. And the reason for that was I was working as a software engineer and had an opportunity to try out a product management role internally. Um, and that, that which was a, a challenging process internally. And I, um, since I had a shot at it, I really wanted to explore that role. And I think I, I felt like switching roles, trying something different would also give me more breadth of experience before coming to the GSC. And so in order to A, have the opportunity to pursue that and B, gain that extra experience, um, I then deferred from two to four years, and I, I thought that was a pretty good time for me to um, leave and come to Stanford. 
Great, thank you. Devin Kelsey, on the counter, you opted for the two-year path. Do you want to share a little bit about how you made that decision that that was the right time for you? Yeah, I mean, candidly, I was so excited to come. I would have come the moment I could, but I got a two-year deferral uh, when I got in, which I think was somewhat standard uh, for college seniors at the time. Um, when I applied to MBA programs, I didn't even know deferral was a thing. Um, and at the time I didn't quite understand it, but I was really glad I went through it in hindsight um, because even looking back at who I was as a college senior applying for business school, thinking I was ready and thinking I had so many questions answered, um, two years in the workplace really helped change that and really helped make me into a person that I was in a much better place starting business school about knowing who I wanted to be. Um, that said, I think if they'd given me the option to come the day after I got in, I would have done so. Thank you. So with a longer lens, uh, Antiman, this question is for you. Now that you've graduated, what benefits have you seen in applying to the deferred enrollment path to MBA uh, from undergrad now that you have a few years uh, under your belt post MBA? Yeah. Um... For me, the deferral was all about hypothesis testing. I think Devin mentioned that as well. Uh, so for me, you know, one of the questions I was grappling with uh, out of undergrad is, you know, thinking about being in the private sector versus the public sector. And I think like that deferral basically gave me an opportunity to test that hypothesis one year at a time I deferred for two years. I think that was really powerful because I think it gave me a concrete data point on which path I want to pursue because after that I was I, I recognized that I want to go down the private sector and that's been immensely helpful for me since then. Um, if anything, you know, maybe I would have probably deferred by another year um, in, in hindsight just to test a few more hypotheses. But but you know, I have no regrets and I think um, I'm very grateful and happy that GSB allowed me to do this because back, again, back when I think to Devin's point, like back when I. Uh, I was applying, I don't think deferred enrollment was a thing. And uh, I was very lucky that that was even an option available for me. Yeah, you brought up uh, an important note, I think, for many of our attendees today in that uh, Stanford one was one of the first schools to offer this deferred enrollment path to the MBA. Uh, but in recent years, it's becoming uh, more and more prevalent and more and more programs are starting to roll out this option. Uh, so naturally, one of the questions we're getting right now is, what are the benefits of deferred enrollment? So you've highlighted one already, which is sort of to test some hypotheses uh, during that time. But uh, Jisha, could you share maybe some of the other benefits that you found, especially since you gave yourself a little more time during that deferral, where there are other benefits of that time that you spent before you came into the MBA that you found really valuable? Yeah, I think um, this goes back to when I was a senior in college and, and applied, it, it was something that I thought um, I wanted to invest in myself. I wanted to just broadly uh, move closer to the business side of things, um, not that because I was on the deep tech side of things. And it was a very broad sort of argument I had in my head, but the four years really helped me talk to alumni, talk to people and understand why I truly wanted to pursue an MBA at Stanford particularly. It also helps me um, plan out the hypotheses as Anshuman was saying that I wanted to test and kind of um, helps me get there faster than I, I think I would have otherwise if I had just gone into my full-time role and have life play its course. Um, it also helps me plan financially because um, I knew that like MBA was coming up, potentially coming up. So um, for all of those three reasons, I think it was it was helpful to to have that life plan already set out. All right. So just checking the Q and A, and I see one question that has gotten upvoted quite a few times, which is, "What made you choose Stanford out of all programs?" So Devin Greenberg, I know you mentioned that it was not so much about. I want an MBA, but specifically it was, I want an MBA from Stanford. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit by what you meant by that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there are so many pieces to it, but I think the big ones that stand out to me are one, uh, the emphasis on interpersonal skills. Um, we have so much like curricular and extracurricular opportunity to develop 
um, our soft skills um, and the way we relate to others, make them feel seen and heard. Um, yeah, and, and just integrate that into our leadership styles. And that has like really been true to my experience so far. Um, the second was definitely the design school at Stanford um, and the ways that has impacted my experience, um, which I can speak to more if people are interested. Um, and then the third was, yeah, definitely the emphasis on cross-sector management, um, social innovation conceived of across sectors, um, and especially the opportunity to meet and collaborate with people who saw things the same way and wanted to think interdisciplinary. Great. Speaking of interdisciplinary, we've had a few questions about joint degrees and dual degrees uh, and how you apply to those as a deferred candidate. So I'll answer broadly speaking with the admissions head on in that uh, you'd apply for deferred enrollment to the MBA now. And then uh, ideally you would be applying to the other programs during your first year in the MBA. Uh, that is true for most of our joint degree programs at Stanford. Um, a couple of exceptions though, uh, are something I can maybe have Devin again pile on here. Um, Harvard Kennedy School, we do actually have a partnership where you can do a joint study program with their MPP or MPA programs. And you can actually apply to Harvard Kennedy during your final year of your deferral, uh, because ultimately you do have the choice for where to begin your studies. Uh, Devin, I believe you joined us first uh, some of your classmates are starting their studies at HKS and then will come to us after that. Uh, do you want to share briefly a little bit about your decision to apply to that graduate program and pursue the joint path, which is something you probably decided during your deferral? Yeah, I, I was really excited about the combination of experiences and communities. Um, something that drew me about HKS was the opportunity to uh, be a student alongside many people who had worked in government and maybe could speak to the spaces in which um, I might wanna serve one day. Um, and I think that the HKS GSB dual degree program is really special in the sense that you have a very strong cohort. Um, and I know that that's really true in my class, like people who are planning out the logistics of their courses and their timeline all together um, and so that makes it like much more seamless than one might expect from the outset um, and to be a really meaningful experience. Great. I'm going to knock out a quick tactical question. Uh, we're getting a lot of questions and interest in how large the cohort is for deferred enrollment. Uh, and I think that's something that is unique to Stanford's program is we don't necessarily have a cutoff or a number that we're aiming for each year uh, because of the flexibility of the program where you can come anytime in one to four years. Uh, we don't necessarily uh, restrict how many offers we make in a given year. Uh, it is really based on how many people are applying each year and, and who is applying and when. Uh, and ultimately we are just looking for the, the strongest candidates we can find that are going to contribute to this community. So those numbers will fluctuate from year to year. Uh, and I know for all of the students and, and alums, uh, the number of deferred students in the class uh, varies quite a bit from year to year. So it really just depends when people make the decision for themselves that it's the right time uh, to come. So uh, Devin, you mentioned uh, some of the benefits, kind of extracurricular and interdisciplinary that exist here at Stanford. Uh, turning things over to Ansiman and Devin uh, Kelsey, wondering if each of you could share maybe some favorite memories uh, of organizations or activities or classes that you got involved with during your time at Stanford that can maybe highlight some of that. Um, I'll go. Um, so one, one of my fondest memories uh, from the GSB was actually taking a class at the law school. Um, uh, you know, I think the law school is one of the top, top rate, you know, top uh, law schools in the country. And uh, they actually I, I don't know if they still do, but back in the day, they had a uh, class called Thinking Like a Lawyer, specifically for, uh, I think, non-lawyer or non-law uh, school students. And it was exceptional. You know, I think every class was basically a primer on the things that I needed to know um, from a legal standpoint of starting a business, but also how to think like a lawyer, right? Like a, a very structured, um, uh, analytical approach to thinking. Really enjoyed that. I think, as Devin mentioned, the D school is really strong. So we, um, so so I know a lot of my classmates actually took some really interesting classes, and there have been really successful businesses that have actually have come out of some of these uh, classes. Um, 
Um, other than that, I think uh, the the engineering school uh, was was a pretty powerful one. I think we actually had a negotiation class that's taught as a cross class between the engineering school and the business school, which is really interesting because I think it has a much more quantitative uh, analytical approach to how you think about negotiations. So again, like um, I'm a big fan, and I think if I'm not wrong, like pretty much. Um, most of the departments at Stanford are one of the top uh, rated uh, departments in the country. So, you know, that speaks to something. Uh, in answering, I'll shift a little bit more to the extracurricular side um, and note that it, it, I would be remiss to not use the, the easiest fruit to grab here, which is GSB Talk, um, which I think every panelist always waits for who's going to be the first one to grab that as the easy thing to chat about. Um, if you're not familiar with GSB Talk, um, it's a program where students go up um, and it's an extracurricular thing that happens in the evenings and students go up and just share their life story with the rest of their classmates and most of the class sits there and listens and these are often very personal and very deep like in my case it was sharing the background of the death of my mother and my problematic relationship with her um, and the power of having a class and a community of people who you respect as intellectuals who you respect as leaders but also like care about and love to like sit there and cry with you as you tell your personal story to them is just something I mean like the other Devin said like applying to MBA is different than applying to MBA at Stanford in some sense because there is just something so unique about the extracurricular which ties in with the curricular in so many ways but there's just something so different about the community there um, and I wouldn't have traded it for the world. Thanks, Devin. Uh, and as an aside, our other Devin is actually a talk coach, uh, which is a leadership opportunity that you can hold uh, at Stanford. So uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, Jisha, I'm going to turn things over to you. Uh, a very popular question is actually from uh, Anvita, who is asking about the career search. So as a college senior, oftentimes your career path is not set in stone. So how did you define that pathway for yourself as you were thinking about your career in your application? Uh, you know, did you have a clear goal at the time? And maybe tell us a little bit about your career search and how it's evolved during your time in the program. Yes, yes, of course, the million dollar question. Um, so when I was applying to the GSC, um, as I was sharing earlier, I was heading into my full-time role as a software engineer. I'm very happy about it. Um, I did have a sense that years down the line, I might want to do something different. And I always had a dream of starting something, starting a business, um, and was always excited about the technology space and wanted to, like, knew that I'd be, I'd be there forever. Um, coming to, I think, between um, applying and coming to the GSB, I came across product management while working with product managers and uh, realized I really enjoyed that role, wanted to try it out and ended up switching and getting some experience there before coming to the GSC. I fell in love with product management. So I came into the GSC knowing I want to stay in the tech industry. I love product management and I still have this dream of starting something. Um, so at the GSC, I took a lot of entrepreneurship courses, um, tried to um, meet people in my class and find people with um, uh, shared interests and explore ideas together, which has been really great at the GSC. Um, I'm not starting, before people ask, I'm not starting a company right now. I'm thinking of joining a growing startup, but that, that remains um, something I'd love to do down the line. Um, I also explored the venture capital industry. That was something I was curious about. I, um, I knew that the world of startups and the venture capital industry are very intertwined. And out of um, the, the hypotheses I wanted to test, that was kind of top uh, up there. So I did some part-time work, um, internships to, to try and understand that world better. Um, but eventually, now that I'm heading into my last Quarter, I, I know that I'm going to um, pursue product roles at growing tech startups in, in the Valley. Um, so the part of your question, which was, how did you chart out that, that path? I think it's just evolved every single quarter. Um, a lot of the explorations and 
classes and part-time work have um, really um, influenced how I think about my career. A lot of the interpersonal plot dynamics, such as feely and, and classes where um, I deeply connect with my peers and, and understand what they're thinking and, and process what I want in life. Um, those have been really helpful to figure out like what I really want when I'm 90 years old and look back on my life. And so a combination of all of those have um, constantly evolved and gotten me to where I am now, where I have some sense of what I want to do right after, and maybe some sense of where I want to end up. Wonderful. Thank you. So for this next question, I'm going to open it up to whoever feels like they might be able to chime in with some examples. Uh, really popular question here about how important is social impact and sustainability at Stanford GSB. Could any of you describe opportunities to get involved in these areas? So is there anyone here on the panel who can speak a little bit about either the Center for Social Innovation uh, or, or one of those areas or, or unique opportunities that exist here at Stanford? If anyone in particular actually took advantage of any of those, we'd love to hear that. Um, yeah, so definitely has been core to, core to my experience thus far. Um, one of the opportunities I've appreciated most since I started in the fall um, was the Center for Social Innovation's peer groups. Um, and so what's beautiful about this opportunity is that you have a little cohort of fellow students who care about social impact or having, having a positive impact with their careers and are conceiving of completely different ways of approaching that, be it through the uh, private, public, or social sectors. Um, and are actually collaborating and supporting one another in thinking through those journeys. Um, and so that has been a very helpful and very meaningful um, aspect of social, social impact at the GSB for me. Um, a second resource or opportunity that springs to mind was actually started by my class. Um, and we just call it the Public Sector Innovation Club. And what it is in practice is students who are thinking about pivoting towards government or towards something government adjacent after graduation and are, you know, bringing together our networks, resources and experiences to support one another and, and thinking that through. Um, and so that's been wonderful as well. Um, but I would say just more broadly, like sustainability, government, um, energy, like in, in whatever domain that you're passionate about social impact, I can pretty confidently say that there are classmates and there are resources with which to pursue that. Great, thank you. I've got my eye on the clock and I know we're about to lose uh, Jisha. So before you go, another popular question. Uh, what have you enjoyed the most about studying at Stanford? Uh, it could be a particular class or the culture. Is there something that you're certainly gonna take with you uh, after graduation? Yeah, it comes down to people, 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 the professors, my peers, but what I will take the opportunity to call out here is the Arbuckle Fellows Program. It's been the most uh, meaningful part of my Stanford experience. Um, for those who aren't familiar, it's, um, it's a program where second year MBAs learn how to coach and develop others and, and work with first year MBAs. Um, for over a two quarter long period. And that's been a really fulfilling um, experience. And I've seen a lot of growth um, through that. So that's gonna be one of my favorites. Great, well, thank you again for joining us today. Uh, good luck in class this evening. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're going to kind of piggyback off of that. Another popular question we've gotten, uh, what has been the most memorable or what was the most memorable community building moment you had at the GSB? So Devin, Kelsey, I'm going to give that one to you. Yeah, uh, I'm going to tell about uh, one of my favorite organizations at GSB, which is GSB Show. Um, it is something I was very involved in, um, but it is exactly what it sounds like a musical theater show that um, the business school puts on. Um, and it is a fully uh, original three hour production with actors, dancers, the whole like. Um, but what really makes it like an interesting thing for the community is how much like people are lovingly teasing out like the somewhat ridiculous things of your own community, but like poking fun at yourselves um and especially like having fun like showing in the end what you love about the school 
Um, it's like the highest attended event at the business school. Like the Dean himself always comes and like sits front and center. And there's so many faculty members there and just about everybody in the class comes. Um, and it's like a really powerful bonding experience by the end because every, without a doubt every year it ends on this note of like some song about how lucky we are to have this community of the GSB and it becomes like a very defining uh, a night for the evening for both those who are involved on it, but all the students who, who go to go to support it as well. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Ansiman, question for you from Carolyn. How has Stanford shaped you into the leader that you are today? Um, so Stanford has been a key part of uh, my career, certainly post-graduation, but also pre-graduation, because I, I think as someone mentioned, uh, they tapped into the Stanford network uh, during the deferral as well. So uh, it was similar for me. I think the biggest piece for me has been to be a more empathetic leader and to be a more outcomes oriented leader. And what I mean by that is, I think some of the classes um, that uh, both the Devons I think have um, highlighted around interpersonal dynamics, there's another one called the art of self coaching that really um, pushes the students to think about what does it mean to truly have one plus one equals to three, right? And a big part of that is listening. A big part of that is uh, understanding and empathizing with your team and really creating the right sort of motivations um, and energies to create exceptional outcomes. And so that's been something that, I've, that I think about a lot on a daily basis. I've been lucky to work with leaders from the GSB who, um, who've done that at much larger scale to see them do it in action and learn that in practice as well. That's been a big part of my learning of how to be an empathetic leader and then make sure that it pairs with outcomes. I think uh, uh, the there are some exceptional leaders um, from the GSB, like John Donahoe, who was the CEO of Bain. Uh, he actually used to teach at the GSB when I was there, ended up uh, joining service now. Um, when uh, I graduated and I followed him, and he's been someone who sort of led, um, led from the front because he used to teach a class called Leadership Perspectives at the GSB, which taught um, how to drive exceptional outcomes with empathetic leadership. And that sort of defined my thinking post the GSB. So very grateful for that. Great, thank you. Well, I imagine our attendees would be very grateful if you would each maybe provide some guidance or some personal experiences about how you approached the application. So in our information sessions and our, our website, we talk a lot about making sure that you are being authentic in your application and taking the time to write your application yourself uh, and take this opportunity to be reflective, uh, you know, reflecting on the experiences that you've had so far, what matters to you and how the MBA may fit into what's next for you. So painting with a with very broad strokes, uh, I'm wondering if each of you could maybe share a little bit about how you approach the application process yourself. Um, I know we touched a little bit about choosing a recommender, but maybe a little bit about how you decided to talk a little bit about your experiences, how you approach the essays, which I know can be quite time consuming uh, and sometimes overwhelming for people. So any general advice or uh, if not straight up advice, just talking a little bit about your own personal approaches, uh, because I think it's important for everyone to realize that there is no one size fits all piece of advice here. It really is each of you coming to this uh, in your own way. So I'm wondering if, if each of you could maybe share a little bit about the approaches you took, because I suspect they're probably going to be a little different. And I think it's important for people to realize that that's okay. I'm happy to jump in here. Uh, yeah, the first thing I'll say is just take any advice from an alum with a grain of salt, because we also don't know why we got in. For all we know, what I think got me into GSB is the thing I got in despite of uh, that. Um, and so just take anything I say with a grain of salt. That said, um, I think the big thing for me was like really being authentic in the essays. And I know that sounds somewhat trite, but authentic even to the point where it sometimes felt generic of the things I was writing. Like on my essay to share for a second of um, what mattered most to me, it was connections with other people. And I thought that was so ridiculously generic that there was no way I could get in. Um, and it's funny because I know so many classmates who wrote a similar essay, um, but it was true to them. And so I would say, write what's true to you, regardless of what anybody else, if that's the most generic example in the world, tell it, but tell it honestly and show why that's true for you. Um, if it's something 
uber specific that nobody else in the world would pick, like pick that too. Just really try to answer the question as they're asking it, because I think that's what they're looking for. Love that. Um, so similar to what Devin had shared earlier, um, I didn't think I had a shot of getting in. Um, and so when I was approaching the application process, I was looking at it as this huge opportunity to just dig deep and introspect. Um, and yeah, as, as we said before, it was all upside, right? It was this amazing structured um, reason to look back on my life to that point, think about what gave me energy, what I cared about, um, how I hope to serve the world around me. Um, and then, yeah, try to tell a story with it. Um, so to that end, just like very tactically, what I started by doing was um, actually creating like an inventory across um, academic experiences, um, extracurriculars, personal life, like you name it, um, of the moments or the experiences that I found most meaningful or where I felt like my work was meaningful um and just started by casting a very wide net and trying to like truly get to the bottom of what mattered most to me um and so yeah i mean i think that maybe that's not the most efficient process but um <laughs> i gained a lot from it and learned a lot from it and so i guess distilling that to like one message i would share with you all is i would really encourage you to look at this application process as just a huge opportunity um and as a potential source of like joy and exploration um, rather than something stressful. That's some really good advice, Devin. Ansiman, anything else to add there? See, I, I think it's very similar to what both the Devons have mentioned, which is um, uh, we don't know why we got in. I think it, it, it's a great exercise for self-introspection. The only one you know, other lens that I perhaps use that was helpful for me is, um, is to give some thought, as Devin mentioned, to what are your big hopes, aspirations, and dreams that you're sort of trying to chase. And you, you may not know what the specifics are. I think someone mentioned that in the Q&A. But at least, you know, like for me, that, at a high level, that was changing how the future of work is going to look like. And I didn't know how or when or in which industry, but having a point of view on what your hopes, aspirations, and dreams are. And then almost being uh, convinced that you're going to get there no matter what it's only that the GSB or the MBA is going to accelerate your pathway there. It's not that you're not, not going to get there. It's a question of how fast and, you know, business school and the GSB is a, is, is a big accelerant for that. And I think once I had that point of view on, I think I was able to write much more honestly about what I'm going to do over the next few years and really and truly where the GSB can plug in and help me. And I, I think that made a big difference for me. I, I, I struggled with my essays for weeks. And then once I had that sort of realization and almost brashness, I think I actually wrote my essays in four hours. And so um, that worked for me. And, uh, but I'm sure everyone's gonna find their own sort of unique uh, way to put their pen, you know, thoughts down on paper and, and, and make sure that it's authentic for you. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for that. Hopefully that is helpful uh, to those of you who are getting ready or are working on your applications currently. Uh, I see one of the questions uh, in the chat coming up about, you know, why are you applying now? I think a couple of our panelists today have mentioned that there's, there's only an upside here to apply in your final year of undergrad. Uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to just uh, you know, take that time to be introspective now. Uh, and if you are not admitted uh, as a college senior, there's plenty of other opportunities in the future further on into your career. Uh, certainly from our perspective uh, at Stanford, we welcome reapplicants every year. Uh, unfortunately, the reality for us is uh, one of the benefits of our program is a small intimate classroom experience. Uh, but as a result, it does mean that we can't admit everyone who uh, is really wonderful every year. Uh, and so there's always options to apply again in the future. So always keep that in mind. Um, speaking of looking ahead to the future, as you all think about your time at Stanford, uh, another question that we're seeing a lot of is, what were the resources that you took advantage of or were most helpful to you in the program? So. Uh, Let's maybe start with Devin Kelsey, if there's something that comes to mind, whether it was a class, a, a program, uh, anything that you found really particularly valuable. And then Devin Greenberg, maybe we'll have you, because I know you're still on your uh, first year, but maybe you can share what you've found really helpful so far. 
yeah, I'll use uh, somewhat of a fun narrative. Um, you know, I, I struggled a lot throughout GSB trying to figure out what I wanted to do afterwards because I sort of realized I was on a path that wasn't the right path. Um, and I think a lot of the classes and even the extracurriculars, even just chatting with classmates, like being in a community like that is a big forcing function of really asking yourself why you're doing what you're doing. And, you know, there are a lot of people in my class who seem to have it all figured out. Like they seem to know where they were going to work afterwards. I was never one of those students. Um, you know, there was actually a class taught by Tyra Banks um, that I took and absolutely loved. And there was a whole, um, uh, assignment in the class where we had to speak in front of the entire rest of the class about who we were and defining who we are. And it started out with like two minutes. And that was super easy because you're telling your story, but then she doesn't tell you that it's now going to go to 30 seconds and then 15 seconds and then a couple words. And as I was doing that, that sort of class and like doing that with uh, professors and my classmates was like a really eye-opening example of like one of those things of like, who am I really at my core? Um, and I think that's just one of hundreds of examples of like in the class and out of the class uh, experiences that really contributed to that sort of thinking that helped me figure out what path I wanted to be on. Yeah, take my perspective with a grain of salt because I'm still, still fresh. But um, I would say the two things that have helped me most in navigating these questions um, and yeah, developing those like strong hypotheses have been one, um, the amazing career center. There are a few individuals there that are just so incredibly helpful um, in taking what, from my perspective, felt like a mess of questions, considerations, um, ideas, and helping me get really clear on how to test those out. Um, and to my classmates, as, as Devin was mentioning, um, it's just like such a wonderful opportunity to be able to sit down with people that you know you like socially, that you are connecting with, and pick their brains about the work they did, um, why they found it meaningful, um, what they're thinking about for the future. Um, and it's kind of this incredible opportunity to like almost prototype several different career paths, like, you know, in between classes, um, just through those sorts of conversations. Um, so yeah, those are the two that come to mind for me. Great, thank you. We had a question uh, from somebody who's interested in understanding our curriculum a, a little bit better. So uh, for those of you who may not be aware, uh, Stanford Graduate School of Business is on the quarter system. Uh, and I think they're interested in understanding more about how that works. So for many of our attendees, they may be familiar with the semester system at their undergrad. Uh, Ansiman, could you talk a little bit about that quarter structure and maybe some of the benefits uh, and or challenges that you found with that format? Yeah, I mean, um, my undergrad was a semester um, system, so when I moved to the GSB, it was a little bit of a change. Um, I personally preferred the quarter structure. It's basically, you know, it is, it's, as it uh, sounds, it's three months of curriculum and coursework interspersed with some breaks. Um, and the reason I really like the quarter system is because I think it forces you to really choose what you're going to learn over, over small chunks of time, go deep into it, really focus on it, master it, and then move on to something else. So I found that to be a much more enriching, rewarding learning experience than a semester, which is usually six months and can feel like it's taking forever. And th so that's one piece of it. The other piece of it is the breaks. And I think the breaks are really special because I think the GSB community, community does a lot during those breaks as well. I mean, you're welcome to take time off, but I think there's usually immersion trips, work study trips, um, those kind of things that are planned during these breaks qu quarter after quarter that I took advantage of. So, for instance, I led a, a GSB trip to India during one of the breaks, and I attended one uh, in Azerbaijan and Turkey and Spain for two others. Um, so really fun uh, way for the curriculum to sort of break out into breaks that are quite meaningful, as well as keep a focused approach towards learning. Um, so that was it. And I think... Uh, Christine, if I'm not wrong, uh, from a curriculum st standpoint, the first year is, uh, is a set of uh, required baseline or uh, fundamental courses on accounting, finance, marketing, so what have you. And then the second year has a ton more flexibility where you can choose uh, courses at the GSB and outside the GSB. And you almost have like a point system where you can sort of choose some of the classes that you really want to pursue over the next year. So. Great. Thank you. And yes. That is still how things are working today. So I'm mindful of our time and we're getting ready to wrap up, 
but we did have a couple of questions I want to try to knock out real quick here. Uh, one is what kind of support can you expect from the GSB during your deferral? Uh, well, we are here from you, we, uh, for you. We don't have a lot of uh, programming. Uh, we've actually checked in with our deferred students over the years to check in in terms of how much engagement you are looking for. Uh, and most recently, we did hear that people are really interested in focusing on the early stages of their career, uh, but they do like the touch points. Uh, and so we do try to find opportunities to invite our deferred students to uh, conferences that are happening on campus and other opportunities to engage with current students and alumni during that time. Uh, we do invite you to join us for the admitted student weekend, the year you are planning to matriculate uh, and enroll. So we do hope that you'd be able to join us for that. Uh, so hopefully that answers some of those questions. And with our final moments of the session, I'd love to just do a quick round robin with our panel. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, Devin Greenberg, I know you're still just getting started, but let's start with you and then we'll work our way around. If everyone could just share uh, a favorite memory, moment, experience, uh, something that, uh, you know, really sticks with them as being something quintessentially Stanford. Uh, we'd love to hear that as we wrap up today. So Devin, maybe we'll start and then we'll we'll end with Antiman, who's got a little more reflection uh, time to think about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a really vivid memory standing out for me right now. Um, and so we, we talked a bit about talk earlier, uh, the institution in which students share their life stories to the class. Um, and I will never forget um, when I got to attend or watch the first talk of, uh, that I had coached. Um, and it had been this really meaningful experience of meeting with a classmate um, over five sessions and learning about her life, learning about what she cares about most in the world um, and supporting her and crafting that story. Um, so getting to watch her get up there and knock it out of the park was just like such a gift and such a meaningful moment of being like, yes, I'm at the GSB and this is incredible. So, yeah. Wonderful. Devin. Yeah, I actually had never even left the country before starting at GSB. And so I got to do my first ever trip with, uh, some of my classmates. And that was the first of about. 10 or 12 times I left the country during those two years, um, but going down to Argentina and Peru and meeting some of my classmates for the first time while having this experience that was so outside my comfort zone. I think the fact that it was so outside my comfort zone and there was so much learning and so much just newness all crammed into two weeks um, is, is a good analogy for the rest of the program because there was just so much over those two years, it's like drinking out of a, a fire hose because a fire hydrant, I guess the saying is, um, because it's just so many things you could be doing with your time that it's it's wild that you even have to choose sometimes between A and B when there's so many great things you could be doing at the school. And Simon, let's let's bring things home. Yeah. Yeah, um, um, I, I'll just close out, given that I have the advantage of what, five or six years now since graduation, I think this was unexpected when I was uh, a deferred admit coming into the GSB, but has been the biggest blessing and memories, set of memories for me uh, six years after graduation is uh, the friendships that I've made uh, at the GSB, my best friends, um, uh, you, till this day, are from the GSB. I've seen them get married. I've seen them go through some of uh, life's most difficult uh, situations. Most recently, uh, one of my best friends from the GSB had to wind down his startup, and uh, I saw him cry, uh, uh, you know, out on the street in San Francisco on the day he closed his uh, uh, shop down. And then, um, next thing we know, a year down the line, we see him go out and raise uh, a Series B from one of the top top venture capital firms in the world, and. Seeing that journey with some of my friends from the GSB has been uh, probably the biggest blessing. They're my family, um, you know, five years now from uh, business school, and that's always going to be special. So that's what I cherish the most uh, at the end of the day. Wonderful. Well, a big thank you again to our panel. I really appreciate you making time to be with us today and sharing your experiences, both applying through deferred enrollment and also sharing your experiences during your time in the program. 
And thanks again to all of you for joining us today, expressing your interest in Stanford and the Deferred Enrollment Program. Uh, we are here for you. So if you do have more questions, feel free to reach out to our office anytime. And we'll continue to be hosting events like this again in the future. So thank you again and have a wonderful day. Take care, everyone. Okay.